everybody, and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims, and these are the top diabetes stories and headlines of the past seven days. I'm on the road, so apologies if the audio and video are a little bit off, but I think we're good enough. And as always, I'm going to link up my sources in the Facebook comments. In the show notes as well at diabetes-connections.com when this airs as a podcast, so you can read more when you have the time. Our top story this week, lots of articles, op-eds, and celebrations to mark the 100th anniversary of the discovery of insulin in July of 1921. The collaboration of Frederick Banting, Charles Best, James Collip, and John McLeod led to the isolation and purification of insulin. Most marking the occasion this year are focusing on access and affordability. The International Diabetes Federation is launching a three-year campaign to celebrate the advances made in diabetes but also to call on more action to ensure all people living with diabetes have the best possible quality of life and health outcomes. The largest and most diverse genetic study of type 1 diabetes ever undertaken is complete. Researchers at University of Virginia say they have identified the most likely causal genetic variants associated with risk and their target genes. They hope the results will help lead to better medical and drug treatment or possible prevention and genetic treatments. This study looked at more than 60,000 people and identified 78 regions on our chromosomes where genes are located that influence our risk for type 1 diabetes. Of these, 36 regions were previously unknown. A new partnership announced between LifeScan, the glucose monitoring company, and Noom, a digital health platform focused on behavior change. LifeScan will be the first digital health diabetes management company to partner with Noom's diabetes support program. The goal is to bring personalized health insights to better address eating habits and weight management. The new fully integrated one-touch solutions program will be available first to consumers in the U.S. starting this fall. AstraZeneca gets approval for its once-weekly diabetes medication by Durian in kids as young as 10. The injectable is used for people with type 2. The approval comes a month after a study showed the drug significantly reduced blood glucose levels in teens. My durian is already approved for adults with type 2, and the only other non-insulin options available for adolescents with type 2 all have to be taken daily. Rice University bioengineers are using 3D printing and smart biomaterials to create an insulin-producing implant. This is a three-year project supported by a grant from JDRF. The researchers will use insulin-producing beta cells made from human stem cells to create an implant that senses and regulates blood glucose levels by responding with the correct amount of insulin at a given time. The goal here is to show their implants can properly regulate blood glucose levels of mice for at least six months, so we are really early on here. But it's an interesting new way of looking at reproducing what the pancreas does. A judge has ruled that Roche did not infringe Insulet's patent. This case was brought over a patch pump sold in the UK. Now, we told you about this case a few weeks back. Insulet claimed because of its Omnipod patent, Roche didn't have the right to sell its AccuCheck solo. The judge ruled for Roche. An Olympic hopeful with type 1 is sitting out the Tokyo Games due to an injury, but she's also inspiring others and starting a new nonprofit to help other people with diabetes. Long jumper Kate Hall Harnden was on track for the 2020 Olympics, but she was injured this past January. She was diagnosed at age 10, and she and her husband have now formed the Dia Strong Foundation, which aims to give financial assistance to people with diabetes who want to improve in their sport and diabetes management. They've planned to launch grants for financial assistance this year. Those details are being finalized, and they're going to host two camps in Maine this year, one for teens and one for people at any age. I have linked up a great story in Diabetes Mine if you want to learn more. And that's it for In the News this week. If you like it, please share it and join me wherever you get your podcasts for our next episode. Coming up on Tuesday, I'm talking to Omnipod. We're going to get an update on the Omnipod 5 with Horizon System. You all had a lot of questions. And this week's interview, the one that is out right now, is with gold medal Olympian Gary Hall Jr. When he was diagnosed in 1999, he was told to give up swimming. Well, he didn't, and he talks about why and how he overcame what was conventional wisdom for athletes at that time. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody, and I'll see you again soon. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.